Well, with the number of Americans killed by Hamas climbing to 22, Israel is putting its internal political divisions aside, at least for now. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the leading opposition leader have now formed a wartime cabinet. This, of course, is President Biden and the Israeli leader spoke again this morning. Correspondent Kelly Meyer joins us live from the White House. Kelly, this is now the fourth call between those two leaders since this all started Saturday. That's right, Nicole. Constant communication. President Biden just had remarks in the Rose Garden and touched on the situation in Israel right off the top. He said they are going to continue monitoring the situation in Israel closely. He says, as you mentioned, he spoke with Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu again this morning and says he'll have more to share this afternoon on that. He adds that the U.S. stands by Israel. Let's take a listen to that. As I said yesterday, my commitment to Israel's security and the safety of the Jewish people is unshakable. The United States has Israel's back, and we're going to be working on this all through today and beyond. Now, the White House says there are 20 or more missing Americans. They add that doesn't mean there are 20 or more American hostages. But President Biden did confirm for the first time yesterday that Americans are among the hostages taken by Hamas. Now, the question is, what is the U.S. doing to get them back? We asked the White House and the Pentagon this question. They reaffirmed that there will be no U.S. boots on the ground in these operations. They say it is the special operations personnel that are already on the ground in Israel as part of their jobs at the embassy or in support of unit-to-unit -unit bilateral training agreements between the U.S. and Israeli special operations. They are the ones that have offered support for rescue efforts. Again, no American boots on the ground. The Pentagon and NSC's John Kirby reiterated that to me. Now, the U.S. is supporting uh, Israel by surging this support to Israel with munitions already on the ground inside Israel and more support arriving overnight to replenish Israel's Iron Dome air defense system that's taking hits from Hamas rockets. The USS Gerald Ford, the world's largest aircraft carrier, arriving Tuesday. This as a warning to Iran and Hezbollah, another Iran-backed terrorist organization in the north, from moving in. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying today he hasn't seen any indication of additional players getting involved in the conflict. And a second aircraft carrier, the USS Eisenhower, is set to leave Norfolk, Virginia in the coming days en route to the Mediterranean as part of their standard deployment schedule, not to assist in this posture adjustment that we're seeing. But a U.S. defense official tells me it can be called in if needed. Now, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, he is on his way to Israel today in a show of support and to meet with senior Israeli officials. This afternoon, President Biden will be meeting with Jewish community leaders and sharing more on what the president calls the U.S. unwavering support for Israel. Nicole. All right, so Kelly, so many moving parts in all of this, but you mentioned this no U.S. boots on the ground, but you were learning there were U.S. military on the ground when those attacks first happened. Yeah, that's right. We're told that a small number of U.S. troops were in Israel for planned military exercises with Israeli troops. Those troops, U.S. troops, were brought out on an empty C-17 that was flown in in those 48 hours of the attack. We're told by defense officials the troops were in Israel, but not in the area of the attacks. That exercise clearly has now been canceled, but unclear what exactly the exercise would have entailed and how it fits into the overall readiness in helping Israel defend itself. Nicole. All right, Kelly Meyer live from the White House. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.